It is Twitter Tuesday when you take over the show, voicing your questions, your comments, your concerns here on Locked On Vols. Plus, both the men and women move up in the latest AP basketball polls, and three Tennessee volunteers are playing for a chance to go to the Super Bowl. All that and more here on a Tuesday Locked On Vols. <laughs> Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome into it. I'm your host, Eric Kane, here on Locked On Balls. And uh, so glad to have you guys along for the ride. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium smart sound bar for TVs, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com and learn more. It is Twitter Tuesday, so we'll spend a large portion of the first half of the show answering your Twitter Tuesday questions, some announcements in segment two, and a little bit of NFL or VFL in the NFL to conclude a Tuesday show. Looking forward to a Wednesday program, getting you set for Tennessee basketball against Florida. Brandon Olson of Locked On Gators will join us for a segment. We'll also have Josh Ward, and we'll have an interview on the Lady Vols coming up later uh, in the week. So I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing to YouTube, Locked On Vols. If you haven't already, go ahead and do that. And, of course, you can make Locked On Vols your first listen every single day. You can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, and, uh, of course, it's always up there. Nothing changes on that end. So let's go ahead and get into it here for a Twitter Tuesday edition of Locked on Vols. Eric chimes in, wants to know, have you heard any rumblings on position changes to maybe assist the linebacking or secondary groups? If not, who could you see benefiting from a position change? Well, that's always a very popular um, question ask in spring and in camp. Uh, any experiments, you know, looking at a guy on the other side of the ball, uh, different different positions, um, especially when we get a good, you know, grasp of what the numbers are uh, coming into fall camp later on in the summer. That's always a question that we ask, and we will continue to do that whenever uh, Tennessee begins its spring practice session here in a couple of months, or really just a couple of weeks, rather, I guess. Um, so I haven't heard anything, but two guys that come to mind. Uh, number one, it's always Lenith Whitehead. I mean, you know, what are you doing here? Of course, he plays running back. Um, he was the SEC a freshman of the week for his, uh, you know, what he did against Missouri. But, you know, he's not a running back in this offense, in my opinion. He he had to play for Tennessee at points in time this past year, so it's good that he was getting reps and good that he was able to to go out there and play a little bit. But um, he is a linebacker. I mean, he was one of the – I mean, he was a highly touted linebacker in that class of 2020, but wanted to play running back. That's why he came to Tennessee. So I feel like if I'm a coach, if I'm someone close to Lenny Whitehead, I'm going and saying, hey, man, there's an opportunity – for you to play a whole lot more at linebacker if you go ahead and make the move and and get some reps in now. So he would be a guy, but of course we've been talking about him and, and changing the linebacker for quite some time. Another one would be, and, and this is a far-fetched, what about Jimmy Holiday? Is Jimmy Holiday going to get any run? Of course, he's been a guy that's been rumored for the transfer portal for a long time. Is he going to get any run at wide receiver this year? You're missing Javante Payton. You're missing Bayless Jones. Of course, Isaiah Nair ended up flipping to Texas, so Tennessee's going to have to fill two spots, uh, one out on the edge and, and one into the slot. You know, Holiday, Callaway, they're versatile guys. You know, if Jimmy Holiday's not cracking the two deep at wide receiver this year, would he have any interest in trying to, you know, play in the secondary a little bit? He was an athlete, played quarterback in college, or played quarterback in high school, rather. Um, that's a little bit far-fetched, but that's another one that kind of comes to mind for me, at least from what I'm thinking. But haven't heard of any position changes, rumblings, you know, offense to defense, defense to offense, um, but that's always on the table. Of course, you'll see little you know, minor changes like interior defensive linemen getting some reps on the edge, stuff like that, a guard getting reps at tackle, stuff like that. But that's all I got for right now, uh, Paul. Appreciate you chiming in and asking that question. Uh, we will go next to K. Wayne. K. Wayne wants to know, I've heard a lot of grumblings that Tennessee is behind on the name, image, and likeness stuff. Do you agree? On The Nation, I heard Austin Price say that there were multiple players on Tennessee's roster that had six-figure name, image, and likeness deals. Do you have any insight on which players he was talking about? Seems this would crush the narrative that Tennessee is behind on name, image, and likeness. Um, I'll say this. Do I know the exact totals for said players uh, on the current roster? No, I do not. Um, do I even know everybody that's getting name, image, and likeness deals? No, I, I don't. I'm still you know, relatively new to the name, image, and likeness deal, kind of like we all are, right? 
I will say this about Tennessee. There is a narrative out there that Tennessee is behind in name, image, and likeness. That's just not the case. T- Tennessee is doing its part. Tennessee has got some prominent donors. Tennessee's got some local business groups that are coming together and are, you know, just you know, right on pace with a lot of other schools. Now, is it to the extent of Texas A&M, Texas, and Baylor? No. Uh, the, you know, those Texas schools, I don't think anybody's going to catch those Texas schools for quite some time. But in my opinion, Tennessee is not – you know, behind in the name, image, and likeness category. As far as the players, I don't know specifics on the players. Here is my guess. Here is my, you know, my two cents on how I would answer this question. Your starting quarterback for an SEC, you know, Division One Power Five football program will from here on out be on a name, image, and likeness deal. If he's a good one like Hendon Hooker, one that wanted to come back when he had uh, NFL options, you best believe that deal is going to be lucrative. So I would assume Hendon Hooker would fall into this category. Another guy that I would assume, I yet don't know, assume would be Cedric Tillman. Much like Hendon Hooker, very good player last year. Had an option to go to the pros. Elected to come back to Tennessee. I would assume that Cedric Tillman would be um, in a category of getting some name, image, and likeness deals. Uh, here on out, name, image, and likeness obviously is going to be used in recruiting. So some of these blue chippers coming in from here on out will likely get NIL deals. I don't know who they are on this year's roster. I don't know if there are any. I don't know. Again, the the two guesses that I had were Hinden Hooker and Cedric Tillman. So uh, that's kind of how I would answer that question, uh, K. Wayne. We will move on to Adam. Adam says, where has this Uros been? Would love for him to be more of a physical presence, but dude has been great the past few games. Yeah, he really has been. He's been fantastic the last couple of games. And, you know, us over at Locked On Vols earlier on Monday, we put out a graphic. Big thanks to Lance Dahl for helping me out here. How important has Uros been lately? Uros over the past five games, averaging 8.2 points per game, 5.2 rebounds per game, and 18.2 minutes per game. And he's shooting... from the field. Now, granted, much of Uros's points come in putbacks, come from dunks, very close range uh, shots. Um, He's still missing some, but he's been on fire the last five games. He's really been a big help for Tennessee um, in SEC play. So I'm with you, man. Um, For someone to be seven foot tall, plays pretty weak defense, (laughs) and that's an issue. But again, like we talked about, you got to take the bad with the good that's coming with Uros right now. And there's a lot more good and consistency for Uros Plopsic for Tennessee basketball than there is bad right now. So we'll, we'll see how sustainable this is. Like we talked about with Mike Wilson yesterday. Um, I don't know how, you know, how long will this last? Will he be a full-time starter moving forward? His minutes are up there. He's playing starter minutes right now. And he's been the second leading scorer at times for Tennessee the past couple of games. So obviously Tennessee is counting on him and counting on him in a big way. We will move on to hitter 94, hole in the roof. Aaron Willis is one of the few remaining blue chip recruits to sign with us in the 2021 class. We've heard repeatedly that the thing keeping him off the field was his lack of size. With him hovering over around 200 pounds, has there been any reports of him benefiting from the nutrition plan in the strength and conditioning program at Tennessee? He provided a huge boost if he could get on the field this upcoming season. Yeah, that's what I've heard, too. And, I mean, of course, you see him out there when we got to be practice a little bit. You see him on Saturdays when he plays on some special teams units. The guy's not very big. Uh, you can't play linebacker in the SEC weighing, weighing 198 pounds. You just can't. Um, he was a good high school linebacker. But the thing with Aaron Willis is he didn't have a senior season. He came in, got into some off-the-field trouble um, as a true freshman last offseason. And so he was behind the eight ball from the get-go, rejoined the team in the summer, and then, of course, went through camp and was there throughout the season. But he missed a critical time period of four to five months to where you could have been in the strength and conditioning program. You could have been getting reps during spring practice. Aaron Willis was not out there. So moving forward, we'll have to see. Um, I haven't heard anything, uh, no reports out that says, oh, man, he's had a, he's had a really good offseason. And that's not uncommon. Of course, we're not on campus every single day anymore. We're not viewing practice every single day right now. But when spring practice approaches, we'll get out there, and there's always that first day or two, it's, oh, man, this guy passed the eye test. This guy passed the eye test. Aaron Willis is a guy that really needs to benefit from a strong strength, and con- <laughs> no pun intended, a strong strength and conditioning program for Tennessee because, again, there's reps to be had at linebacker, and a big reason why he didn't get those reps is because he was so raw, and quite frankly, he was a little undersized last year. Um, when you're playing Solon Page, Aaron Beasley, and Jeremy Banks, and those are the only three linebackers you're playing, what's that say about William Bohan, Aaron Willis, and some of the other guys? 
Um, same with Aaron, uh, William Mohan. They like him. Uh, he's just a little bit too green is how he was characterized to me. Um, and, and that's okay because, again, he's still young. So uh, we'll have to see about Aaron Willis moving forward and kind of where he is. And I think a lot of those answers will be – or questions will be answered the first couple of days of spring practice. Um, we will move on to Andrew. Andrew wants to know, not a secret that Heupel missed out on some great in-state class for the 2022, even though he finished with a respectable – a class. Who are the bigger? Who are the biggest in-state names for the class of 2023 moving forward? And who are some must-get guys that Heupel needs to uh, get on? And so, as I type this into my computer because I forgot to pull it up, apologies. Uh, there are a couple that come to mind. Uh, the two big ones, Aiden, um, Aiden Bustle, um, is a guy that Tennessee wants. Offensive lineman was here on campus from Mount Juliet. Um, Trevor Duncan is a defensive end, can play offensive line here by near, uh, nearby uh, Catholic High School. He's a guy. Caleb Herring, that's where the conversation starts. Outside linebacker from uh, Riverdale. That Tennessee is, I mean, he's he, it starts with Caleb Herring, brother of Elijah Herring, who just signed with Tennessee, and then moves on from there. Um, you know, you got some other guys. Uh, Bryson Sanders is on campus. He would be, you know, second or third option for in-state offensive lineman behind Aiden Bustle, in my opinion, but he's a guy that's in this conversation. Max Carroll from Memphis, Shamar Porter, wide receiver from Ensworth. Um, you know, they like Nathan Robinson, inside linebacker. He, he'll be on the defensive line if he were to come to Tennessee. Uh, Mark West Taylor's an athlete from McKenzie. Deshaun Bishop, nearby Carnes High School. Tennessee likes him as well. Um, so there, those are some names that kind of come to mind uh, for Tennessee in terms of in-state recruiting. Uh, those are just a few names, and of course, we'll talk more and more and more about those um, as the offseason progresses because, as you guys know, recruiting never, ever, ever stops. So, uh, last one, Stephen Skidmore. You said we can ask you anything on Twitter Tuesday, so I have two questions. First, huge congratulations on your engagement. Stephen, I appreciate that, man. Hashtag very blessed over the Christmas holidays. I cannot believe I found a woman that wants to uh, spend uh, every single day with me for the rest of my life. So, uh, that is saying something. Do you believe in miracles? Am I right? So thank you so much from there. When's the big day? I don't know. Wedding planning sucks. So I'm leaving that to her. Uh, second, I did the hard part, right? I bought the ring. Uh, second question. Will you have any baseball coverage on the show like you did last year? Absolutely. Tennessee coming in at number 17. I don't have it in front of me, either 17 or 18 and baseball America's preseason poll. So absolutely. We will have some baseball coverage on the podcast uh, later on in the spring, and of course when the season starts, and uh, baseball really carried us into the summer months last year here on the show. All right, more on Tennessee basketball. Tennessee had a player enter the transfer portal and some early enrollees who were on campus. That's all coming up in segment number two of a Twitter Tuesday show. But first, Bet Online like to wish you a happy new year of betting as we continue our march throughout the playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all your sports wagering this season here in 2022. It's a new year, new updated desktop and mobile website, so sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you need to do is enter the promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Las Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Be like me. Be a big winner. Only a couple more football games left. Conference championship time this coming up weekend before the big game in a couple of weeks. And then football is gone for about eight months. So take advantage at betonline.ag. Bet online, it is where the game starts. Welcome back into Locked On Vols here on a Tuesday edition. Thanks so much for making the show. Locked On Vols, your very first listen. And I want to encourage you to make Locked On SEC your second listen with Chris Gordy of Locked On SEC. All right, kind of all over the map here in segment number two. A couple things to get into before we have an abbreviated segment number three. First, I do want to mention, of course, I'm sure you saw by now, but uh, Tennessee men's basketball team moved up to number 18 in this week's AP poll. Moved up from 22 up to 18. Had a win over, of course, uh, 24 up to 18. Had a win over Vanderbilt on the road in SEC play mid uh, mid last week, and then had a win over number 13 LSU um, over the weekend. Tennessee actually sits at 18. LSU sits at 19. So Tennessee moves up six spots, still firmly inside the AP Top 25. Huge win for the University of Tennessee as it will host Florida on Wednesday. 
And as we'll talk with Brandon uh, coming up on tomorrow's show, Florida played over the weekend. Florida played at the time you're listening to this podcast last night. <laughs> and Florida's going to play on Wednesday as well. Um, the SEC doing no favors to our friends down in Gainesville. I say friends loosely there. Uh, the women's basketball team with the loss to Louisville over the weekend, the Lady Vols move up a spot to number four, 18 and one on the season, moved up one spot previously, number five in the country, South Carolina, Stanford, North Carolina State. Um, those teams are all in front of the Lady Vols who sit at four, and then Louisville is at number five. Lady Vols will have, will, they'll be on the road at Auburn on Thursday and then back home against Arkansas on Sunday. Lady Vols, a fantastic start to the season. We continue to talk. We'll talk more Lady Vols later in the week. Uh, that last couple, that last stretch of the regular season game is going to be tough for the Lady Vols, but a fantastic start to the season. 18 and one, undefeated in SEC play. Real quick, let's flip back to the men. Of course, Tennessee, number 18 in the country. Auburn, for the first time in school history, number one in the AP poll. Should have been number one last week, but uh, some silly voter uh, put Auburn at number eight in the country, and that slid them down to behind Gonzaga at number two. Had the most first place votes last year or last week. Had the most by a wide margin this week after the win against Kentucky. 45 first place votes for Auburn uh, to 15 for Gonzaga. So you've got Auburn at number one uh, here from the SEC. The next one that comes in is Kentucky at number 12. And then you have Tennessee at number 18, LSU at number 19. And those are your teams ranked inside the AP Top 25 from the SEC. All right. Chris Okparogane, offensive lineman for the University of Tennessee, a part of that class of 20. I guess it was 2020, he has entered the transfer portal. Now we're talking about this. Why didn't Tennessee go out and get guys via the transfer portal? Why don't they go out and sign all these guys like they did last year? Well, numbers are tight because of the self-imposed uh, uh, scholarship limit. We don't know exactly what that number is. We've talked about it, but uh, there is one for this year, dating back, of course, to the investigation into the football program that resulted in the firing of Jeremy Pruitt. So here's one that's leaving, a guy that never really – Never really saw the field consistently. Appeared in seven games. Appeared in one game in 2021, four games the year before. Uh, very much undersized, in my opinion. You know, Jeremy Pruitt's staff brought him in from IMG Academy. Uh, really liked him a lot. I think he was valued a lot more by the previous staff than uh, than what Josh Heupel and company, you know, value him here. Uh, but he is looking for a new opportunity, and he has entered the transfer portal. So as far as a depth perspective, you know, when we went over Vols in review, and I kind of laid out what the you know each tackle depth chart looked like in guard and center. I didn't even write Chris A down. And I mean, that's no slouch to him. I'm just saying he wasn't really figuring in to be in the mix whatsoever. So once again, every player for the University of Tennessee that's entered the transfer portal, it's really come as no surprise. And it really hasn't hurt Tennessee so uh, you know, that bad. But of course, we're here in mid-January. There's a long way to go. So Chris Ockprogane enters the transfer portal. And then finally on this segment, I want to uh, kind of go over the list. Tennessee officially has 18 early enrollees for uh, this past recruiting class. Four offensive linemen, one running back, four wide receivers, two quarterbacks, two tight ends, two defensive linemen, two linebackers, and one defensive back. The names for the early enrollees who are showing up are on campus, are going to classes. Campus or classes started uh, Monday of this week, January the 24th. From the offensive line, Mo Clipper, Brian Grant, Addison Nichols, and transfer Gerald Mincy. Of course, Gerald Mincy comes by way of Florida via the transfer portal. So the offensive linemen that are here, Mo Clipper, Brian Grant, Addison Nichols, and Gerald Mincy. Addison Nichols took part in a couple of of bowl practices over the Christmas holiday. Running back, Justin Williams, same with Justin Williams, took part in a couple of practices. Uh, he is early enrolling, early enrolling. Try saying that 10 times fast. I still didn't say it right. Early enrolling. <laughs> uh, at the wide receiver position, Cam Miller, Chaz Nimrod, Caleb Webb, and Squirrel White. All four of Tennessee's wide receivers in this class of 2022 are early enrollees. And for an offense looking to replace two very productive wide receivers from the previous season, that's a good sign. I just, you know, squirrel white, unlimited potential in this offense as speedster in the slot. But I'm telling you what, Caleb Webb's going to be a stud in this offense uh, one day down the line. It probably won't be this year. It might not be the uh, in, in 2023 season. But Caleb Webb's got the build, the perfect makeup for an outside receiver in this offense. 
I can't wait to see what he turns into down the line. Quarterbacks, Taven Jackson, of course, who is the scholarship quarterback in this class of 2022. And then walk on Navy Shuler, who, of course, a legacy. His father, Heath Shuler, played here at the University of Tennessee. Navy from North Carolina broke a ton of high school passing records. Uh, spent the last couple of seasons at Appalachian State, uh, walking on to the University of Tennessee. He is an early enrollee, Navy Shuler. Tight ends, two walk-ons um, have entered the chat for Tennessee. Charlie Browder, who is from Kingsport, Tennessee, uh, was at, was with Hypel at UCF. He is walking on to the University of Tennessee. And Titus Rower has also walked on to the University of Tennessee. He is from Bryan, Ohio. Those two guys are early enrollees. Defensive linemen, Jordan Phillips and Tyree West, two guys who took part in a couple of bowl practices for Tennessee over the Christmas holidays. Both of those guys, your defensive lineman signees, are early enrollees. Linebackers, Elijah Herring and Jackson Hanna. Elijah Herring, Tennessee's first commit for Josh Heupel, uh, signed in the early signing period. He is on campus as an early enrollee. And Jackson Hanna, who is from Middle Tennessee, spent the last couple of seasons at, um, I think it was Miami of Ohio. Uh, don't quote me on that. Nebraska, excuse me, Nebraska, a big difference. Uh, Jackson Hanna from Middle Tennessee, spent the last couple of seasons as a special teams player at Nebraska. Uh, that was announced today that he is walking on for the University of Tennessee. So Tennessee doing a nice job adding some quality preferred walk-ons uh, to this class. We move on down. Last one, one defensive back early enrollee. That is Desmond Williams, who I believe has a chance to contend for immediate playing time at cornerback. Also in the return game, one of the nation's most explosive returners and the nation leader in junior college in interceptions uh, gathered uh, was Desmond Williams. So those are the list of the players who are early enrolling and who will be taking part in spring practice here in the next couple of weeks. One more time, offensive lineman, Mo Clipper, Brian Grant, Addison Nichols, and Gerald Mincy. Running back, Justin Williams. Wide receivers, Cam Miller, Jazz Nimrod, Caleb Webb, and Marquarius White, Squirrel White. Quarterbacks, Taven Jackson and Navy Schuler. Tight ends, Charlie Browder and Titus Rohrer. Defensive linemen, Jordan Phillips and Tyree West. Linebackers, Elijah Herring and Jackson Hanna. And defensive back, Desmond Williams. All right, some balls in the NFL. Three will be playing for a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Who are they? And who were some other balls that took part in NFL contests this year? We'll run down that list here in segments number three. But first, I want to tell you guys about an app that everyone who buys gas needs to know about. All right, it is GetUpside. My listeners are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store and Google Play right now. And while you're there, use the promo code SCORE for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up. Cash back. Don't pay full price of the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free and use the promo code SCORE for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 uh, in a year in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back is added right to your account. You can cash out at any time from your bank account, PayPal, e-gift card, Amazon, and other brands. Just download the free Get Upside app and use that promo code SCORE to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. That is promo code SCORE at Get Upside. We got a final segment left here on a Tuesday Locked On Vols. Appreciate you guys for hanging out, making Locked On Vols your first listen. If you're new to the show, welcome to it. I'm your host, Eric Kane. I do radio at 99.1 The Sports Animal in Knoxville, Tennessee. I also write for the rival side, covering University of Tennessee football, basketball, and recruiting. Um, YouTube, it's up there. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and subscribe. Never too late. Just search Locked on Vols on YouTube. Every new episode premieres at 9 a.m. on YouTube and, of course, overnight for the audio portion of this podcast. Let's talk Vols in the NFL, shall we? It's no secret, even when Tennessee's been down the last couple of years, or the last you know 10 to 15 years, Tennessee still churns out a lot of NFL talent. Three former Vols have the opportunity to go and play for a Super Bowl. Who are they? Well, two for the San Francisco 49ers, most notably Juwan Jennings, who made one reception for six yards in the 13 to 10 win for the 49ers at Green Bay. He has, I think he had like three receptions for nine yards the week prior, but um, in a game where the 49ers had to win to get into the playoffs, he was critical. He has carved out a niche in this offense on third down 
just kind of like Tennessee. Um, you know, when he was here in Tennessee, uh, he's found the end zone a couple of times this year. Jawan Jennings, the former seventh round pick that ran a 4.74 of a 40 yard dash at his pro day is really, you know, finding a home in San Francisco. So that is great to see. Uh, his teammate, Emmanuel Mosley, cornerback, of course, plays nickelback as well at points and times in the season. He had four tackles that went over Green Bay. That was a 13 to 10 final. Uh, you know, it was cold, it was snowy, the frozen tundra, completely opposite. Like, you know, the games on Saturday with Cincinnati and Tennessee, I'm a Titans fan, so it hurts to talk about. You know, th there was some scoring there, don't get me wrong. There was hardly any scoring whatsoever. I mean, San Francisco won that game at Green Bay without scoring an offensive touchdown. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo kind of sucks, right? Completely different from Saturday's games to what we had on Sunday with Los Angeles and Tampa Bay, and of course Kansas City and Buffalo. Um, all four games. All, if you heard us on the, uh, you know, ninety nine one the Sports Animal on Monday in the morning, I also was a part of Sports One Eighty. I mean, we're the real winners here, right? That was an incredible weekend of football. But nonetheless, not a whole lot of scoring in day one. Tons and tons and tons of scoring, um, in day two. So uh, Emmanuel Mosley and Juwan Jennings a chance to play for a Super Bowl berth against the Los Angeles Rams this weekend. Who's the other one? Well, none other than Trey Smith. Trey Smith, a guard, right guard for the Kansas City Chiefs, totaled 76 snaps in the overtime victory against the Bills on Sunday evening. 42-36 was that final score in overtime. Get this from Trey Smith. I didn't know this until I got the email earlier, uh, earlier this week. Trey Smith has played 1,335 snaps this season. That's the most of any lineman in the NFL. How great is that? We all know about Trey Smith. We saw him up close and personal for three years or for four years here at the University of Tennessee. The way he leads, the way he goes to work, the way he plays. A guy that had to miss an awful lot of time for, you know, blood clots in his lungs and all that type of stuff. Um, unfortunately, something that's completely out of his control. There was some, I mean, in my opinion, that's why he slid to the, what was it, the sixth round? How about all the concerns for that? And he's the leading offensive lineman in terms of snaps. Uh, in the NFL this season, you, you love things you love to see. That's from uh, Trey Smith. So Juwan Jennings and Emmanuel Mosley for San Francisco, and then Trey Smith for Kansas City, a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Other former Vols that were in action over the divisional weekend, uh, Josh Malone, while well, he was a, a practice squad player for the Packers, Morgan Cox, a long snapper for the University of, uh, or excuse me, for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, he had seven snaps, four punts, two extra points, and one field goal. Of course, Tennessee fell 19-16 to to the Cincinnati Bengals. All right, so I'm not going to go into stats or anything like this, but I'm just going to run through the list of former Vols that are on NFL rosters of some sorts, whether it be active, whether it be futures, reserves, practice squad. These are the former Vols that are tied to the NFL right now. And some of these names, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy played for Tennessee. Wow, I had no idea. Every now and then, you know, usually when, since I'm on the beat covering Tennessee, when they leave the University of Tennessee, often I just, you know, if I see them, you know, on television, I'm watching NFL football, that's awesome. But I don't, you know, cover these players anymore. So I, I just, you know, I, I miss a lot once they get to the league. So every so often when I go through this list, I say, oh, man, that guy's playing for that guy now or that, that team now. Oh, he's on the practice squad. It's really, really cool to see. Um, let's go through this list here. Alex Ellis is with the St. Louis, excuse me, the Arizona Cardinals talking football, not baseball here. Uh, he is on the, uh, he is a, a reserve and, um, he is uh, not on the active roster. Cordero Patterson had a fantastic season for the Atlanta Falcons, of course, on the active roster. Juwan James with the Baltimore Ravens. He is on the injured reserve, has not been healthy for the last couple of seasons, but when healthy, still a very dominant tackle. He's with the Ravens. Khalil McKenzie. A defensive lineman also played a little offensive guard as well at points in times. He keeps hanging around, hanging around. He is on a reserve contract as well. Three Cleveland Browns. Dustin Colquitz, who's on the active roster, punter. Uh, Malik Jackson, who just continues to hang around. He is on the active roster. And then John Kelly, who at points in times was on the active roster this year uh, because there's been so many issues with the Cleveland Browns running back situation with covid uh, he is not right now, but he is a part of the Cleveland Browns organization. Two from the Denver Broncos, Alexander Johnson, a.k.a. A.J. Johnson, and um, he is obviously 
uh, a big part of what they do defensively in Denver. Jonathan Kongbo, who just signed with the Denver Broncos after their season ended, he is on a reserve futures deal as well, so that's good to see. Jalen Reeves-Maben, one of the impactful players not named a quarterback in the National Football League uh, with the um, with the Detroit Lions. Uh, he is a starting linebacker, made his name playing special teams for quite some time. He is on the active roster for the Detroit Lions. Mentioned Josh Malone, practice squad player for the Packers. Trey Smith, starting offensive lineman for the Chiefs. Josh Palmer, in the rotation of wide receiver, on the active roster for the LA Chargers. Kendall Vickers is on the active roster, in the rotation on the defensive line for the Las Vegas Raiders. That's another guy. Uh, two Dolphins, Justin Coleman, active roster, reserve, defensive back, cornerback, and nickelback. Michael Pilardi, active roster. He is the punter. All right. So we'll go to Luke Stalker at Minnesota. Talk about a guy that's just hanging on, right? I mean, he has had a career. Third string tight end for the Minnesota Vikings on the active roster. Of course, a lot of these players, their seasons are over, of course. Jonathan or Yakum Johnson, first string fullback for the New England Patriots. Didn't know what to do with him when he was here at Tennessee under Butch Jones. He has carved out a role in that Patriots offense, plays a little tight end, plays fullback, plays H back. He is on the active roster. And then we go to there's two teams that have VFL, as we call VFL home in the NFL, um, but one more notable than the other right now. We'll start with the New Orleans Saints. Five former Vols are being paid by some sorts by the New Orleans Saints. Marquez Callaway, who was a starting wide receiver. Alvin Kamara, who's an all-player running back. Bryce Thompson, who has been active on points and times this year at cornerback and at safety. Shai Tuttle, who is a starter on that defensive line. And Ethan Wolf, who has been active for a game this season because, again, the COVID issues for the New Orleans Saints. So five former Vols employed by the New Orleans Saints. Typically, there's about four or five Pittsburgh Steelers. Right now, only two. Joshua Dobbs, third string running back. And, of course, Cameron Sutton, your starting cornerback. Two Philadelphia Eagles, former first-round pick Derek Barnett, who is uh, coming up on the end of his rookie deal. He is on the active roster, of course. And Jason Kroom, who is on a reserve contract, a uh, former wide receiver, but has played more tight end in the National Football League. Two for the Seattle Seahawks, uh, Darrell Taylor. Very active one out there. He had a really nice season after not playing as a, as a rookie the year before. And Nigel Warrior, who was on the active roster, a reserve safety. I mentioned the two from the San Francisco 49ers, Juwan Jennings, Emmanuel Mosley, and the one for Morgan Cox uh, for the Tennessee Titans. So when we're playing the name game, how about this? Kyle? Oh, I didn't even mention Kyle Phillips. Um, he is on the active roster for the New York Jets. So name game, right? Kyle Phillips, Jason Kroom, Morgan Cox. Um, Michael Pilardi, Kendall Vickers, <laughs> a Jonathan Kongbo. Um, you know, we could go on and on and on. Alex Ellis, name that former Vol. Where is he? Where is he hanging on? Uh, Tennessee always putting out talent in the NFL. So I want to kind of go through that list because I, I went through it earlier on Monday and um, I thought it was really, really cool how there still are so many former Vols on active rosters. If not active, they've been active at points in times this year or practice squad players in the NFL. All right, guys, that'll do it here for a Tuesday show. Thanks to everyone who chimed in with some Twitter Tuesday questions every single week, Twitter Tuesday, when you take over the show at underscore Kaner and at locked on Vols. tomorrow's show, we'll get you ready for Tennessee and Florida. Brandon Olson of locked on Gators will join us for a segment. Josh Ward for Ward Wednesday. He will join us for a segment as well. So looking forward to tomorrow's show. Now that we're done here with Locked On Balls, you may Locked On Balls your first listen. Check out Locked On SEC, Locked On Bets, Chris Gordy of Locked On SEC, all the news and notes around the conference, some of the best interviews you're going to get on this network. Follow Locked On SEC with Chris Gordy. And of course, Locked On Bets, your boy Q, handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Make all those your second listen behind, your second, third listen behind Locked On Balls, which is your first listen each and every day. You guys are killing it with YouTube already up to about 160 subscribers here in a little over a week. Can't thank you enough. If you haven't already, please continue. Even if you're not a big YouTube fan, just go there. If you have a profile, please subscribe. Locked on Vols. You'll be doing a service for the podcast. Each episode premieres on YouTube every morning at 9 a.m. And of course, it's made available for the audio platforms overnight like normal. Uh, this is Eric Kane, your host here of Locked on Vols. Can't thank you enough for another awesome show. We'll do it again tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, everybody.